Air pollution killed more than 8,500 people across four Chinese cities in 2012, according to a joint study by Peking University and Greenpeace. Air pollution was also responsible for 1.08 billion dollars in economic losses. The report, published on December 18th, studied the effects of PM 2.5 air pollution in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Xi'an. These are the four major cities in China's north, east, south, and western regions. The research concludes that if these cities lower their PM 2.5 pollution levels to meet guidelines issued by the World Health Organization, such deaths would be reduced by at least 81 percent. Economic losses could be reduced by more than 850 million dollars. PM 2.5 refers to particulate matter smaller than 2.5 micrometers in diameter. When inhaled, these particles can enter the bloodstream, leading to heart, brain, and lung disease, including cancer. Studies show that most PM 2.5 is created by the combustion of coal. The majority of China's energy comes from coal burning. Greenpeace is calling for a quote urgent policy adjustment by Chinese authorities to cap regional coal consumption. It also wants existing coal-fired power plants to be retrofitted with nitrogen oxide scrubbers. Welcome to E1.2. Today we're going to evaluate the current methods for the reduction of air pollution. So you should quickly see if you can name the air pollutants that the IB wants you to know, and not confuse them with the greenhouse gases. That is your key. So the pollutants we're going to take care of first with catalytic converters or carbon monoxide, nitrogen monoxide, and VOCs. So catalytic converters are going to use the same principle. The only thing is that you're going to have to memorize the different equations that govern them. So where do we find these catalytic converters? Well, quite often by law, they're required inside. Um, vehicles. So, if we take a look at our description here, we'll sort of highlight it in the picture、um, again. Hot gases are passed over a platinum, rhodium, or palladium catalyst. Now, here you only have to remember one of them, and platinum is the one I would suggest because it comes up more often in other parts of the course.、Um, but in reality, actually, all three are used in conjunction.、Um, a catalyst, again, it is something that will cause a reaction to happen at a lower activation energy. And the catalyst, which is one of these、um, transition metals, will not be consumed in the process. So they will adsorb. Keyword: add, adsorb, not absorb. Adsorb to the surface. Adsorption happens on the surface. So, in other words, these gases, these pollutants, will、um, adsorb to the surface of these catalyst metals. And As a result, we'll actually reduce about 90% of the pollutants that would be emitted without the catalytic converter. So it's very, very useful. So here we can see the engine will produce our hot pollutants. They will pass through our catalytic converter, which is basically a series of channels of these metals that are coated with our transition metals like platinum, rhodium, and palladium. And those will act as the surface for reactions that convert. The pollutant into a non-pollutant. So for carbon monoxide, you, it basically reacts with more oxygen to form carbon dioxide. So you're producing that, which is a greenhouse gas, but not considered a pollutant. Then you have the, a similar process with nitrogen monoxide. This time, it's reacting with other carbon. It's reacting with another pollutant, carbon monoxide, to produce again CO2 and N2, which is what makes up most of our atmosphere, and it is not a greenhouse gas. And then with VOCs,、uh, there's no one reaction, but basically, if you just imagine a volatile organic compound, which is you know often carbon and hydrogen, and it will react with more oxygen to sort of complete the combustion, so you end up with CO2 again. So catalytic converters don't actually do much in terms of greenhouse gases, but they do reduce the pollutants, which we see can have health effects on people. Our second way to、um, control Air pollutants is the control of the fuel-to-air ratio. In other words, inside your engine, there will be a certain design to allow a certain ratio of how much fuel to how much air when it's burning. So this will actually reduce nitrogen monoxide by using lean burn engines. So what you have to know about this is that nitrogen monoxide, if you remember from the first topic E1.1, is produced at high temperatures in an engine. What we can do is we can actually decrease the amount of oxygen input into the engine by designing it differently, and in that process, it will lower the temperature. And if it lowers the temperature, then you'll produce less NO. 
However, a decrease in oxygen causes another problem, incomplete combustion. So when you do that, you will actually create more of the other pollutants, CO and VOCs. So what the designers have to do is they have to find a balance of reducing NO while not increasing CO and VOCs too much. And so they found that there's basically an 18 to 1 air to fuel ratio. So in other words, we're still producing all three of these. Um, it's just that we're trying to reduce the amount of nitrogen monoxide going out. So that's the first two series. Now we're going to switch to our second page here. And we're going to talk about some ways related more to sulfur. So sulfur dioxide, we want to reduce, one of, we want to reduce that so that it can't produce acid rain. So what we have is something called alkaline scrubbing. And we'll just pop over here and we'll just take a quick look here. And what, what it basically is, is it's spraying a certain alkaline um, sort of water with alkaline properties. So alkaline water is sprayed onto the exhaust gases and then the sulfur dioxide gas is then precipitated out and be, can be collected. And that can actually be 95% efficient. So what we see here is calcium carbonate is going to be reacting with, and this is in the water that they're spraying down. So in this water, they've sprayed, including calcium uh, carbonate, it's going to hit the gases. So these are the dirty gases coming in. And then they're going to react. And when they react, you can see here sulfur is in a gaseous form. Now the sulfur is trapped in a precipitate, a solid form, calcium sulfite. So and then you get carbon dioxide. This can then be collected and the only um, gas that escapes will then be CO2. So this still causes greenhouse, um, ga this is still a greenhouse gas, it doesn't affect that factor, it just reduces the amount of SO2 that can go out to form acid rain. Now also related to that, and both of these are very much related to power generation, especially in coal, we're going to modify it slightly. It's still with SO2, but instead of calcium carbonate, um, we're going to look at a reaction with calcium oxide. So calcium oxide, again, is going to react with the gaseous SO2 and produce the same precipitate as the previous one, alkaline scrubbing. The only difference, which is very major, is that you can see there's no CO2 produced. So what happens here is limestone is mixed with the coal before combustion, and then during combustion, calcium oxide is produced from the limestone, and that's why that's here and that reacts with the sulfur dioxide and so that can be collected as a precipitate and again it can re re reach 95 percent efficiency but also reduces uh, CO2 here's a, a basic picture of that I'll just scroll down slightly there uh, so basically the coal that's being put inside is going to be combined with the limestone beforehand and when that happens you get the calcium oxide mixing together with what's with the combustion reaction and then the calcium sulfide is being precipitated out. So those two are more for sulfur, definitely related more to coal burning because there's sulfur in the coal. And it should be noted that these types of systems, although they're absolutely great, they are not they are not widespreadly used. Even new power plants being built today um, that use coal are not actually being built with these in all parts of the world because there's a expense associated with them that they don't want to spend. Now on to our last topic is related to the particulates. So we got to, uh, now to our last air pollutant. So what will happen here, and this is related, oh sorry, this is, there we go, there we go. This is related to your air cleaners, and I have one of these when I was in Beijing. A really high quality air cleaner will have electrostatic precipitation, so it's going to use electricity to remove particulates so that they don't irritate or cause any harm to you, as we saw in the previous E1.1. So, what happens basically is that you have particles that uh, you want to get out of the air. So, they're passed through ionizing rods, which I've drawn here giving the particulates a negative charge. So what's basically happening there is they are gaining an electron through those ionizing rods and creating ions. The particles are now attracted to the positive collection plate and that is afterwards. So what basically happens, if I can just get my pen up here, is you have these particles over here and they're going to be going into 
in this direction, I'll just draw an arrow there, they're going to go through here, they're going to become negative. And then once they become negative, they're going to stick to this plate, and then they won't be, uh, they won't pass out through the other side, so the air will be clean on the other side. So it's a, a fairly simple process uh, conceptually.